So it begins again. Welcome back to the Creep Geeks Podcast. I'm Greg. I'm Omi. And this is episode 305, season 8. Solar Eclipse Sickness and Murder, Tennessee Chemtrail Ban, Zombie Sex Cicadas, and Tardigrade Anti-Aging Elixir? Yes. Lots of stuff. All right, so anyway, welcome back to the podcast. If this is your very first time tuning in to the Old Creek Peaks podcast, we talk about stuff we find to be interesting on the internet and some of our experiences from the past. Sure. I say it because we haven't had any recent experiences because, you know, it's just been kind of lame in the paranormal world, mm. at least as far as what I can see. So that's a good thing that we talk about paranormal and weird news. Paranormal stuff and weird news. We have a couple different ways you can get a hold of us if you'd like to interact with our podcast. The easiest way is through the internet. So we have a Facebook page, and it's called... Creep Geeks Podcast. Yes, and a phone number. That phone number is going to be 575-208-4025. That's right. You can interact with us there if you'd like. Anyway, uh, here's the deal. So uh, we like to do things and go out and see stuff and all that, and it's been kind of weird here lately, so we've been kind of busy. We've had a lot of things going on this is the time of year where doctor's appointments happen work happens it just gets busy Mm. so i'm gonna need you to perk up right now you're like just looking at me like sorry i'm thinking about all that work and all those projects well you know what put it aside it's only the podcast now it's Mm. all about the podcast we are podcast driven Mm. that's right so speaking of podcast, Ruben, we actually uh, hung out with Daniel over the weekend, went to uh, one of my favorite places to go to. It's called Andrew's Geyser yeah, in Old Fort, uh, North Carolina. And so we could kind of catch up and see what's happening. And I was shocked and dismayed that the geyser was completely dry. Yeah. Like dust dry. Not like the water got turned off or something, but like it'd been dry for a while. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I'm kind of disappointed, Old Fort. You need to fix that. It rained, though. It rained really hard, and guess what? still bone dry. Yeah, that was weird. Not even a puddle in that thing. Yeah. Fix it. (laughs) I'm serious. Fix it. That thing used to be majestic, man. I used to see it in the 70s when I was a little kid or younger, a youngster. Mm -hmm. Things shooting 20, 30, 40 feet in the air. I'm like, this is neat. Now it's like nothing. And the last time we seen it, it looked like somebody stuck a garden hose in it and had it shooting up in the air. It was lame. (laughs) Got to fix this old fort. (laughs) I'm just saying. And if somebody wants to come at me about it, I'll see you in the front yard. Go in the parking lot right now. I'll see you in Old Fort. That's right. I'll see you in Old Fort. We'll go to the geyser. Get some dust on you. And it's a nice little place. It's kind of got some weird stuff going on, how it was constructed, and some of the way things are set up. It kind of reminds me of uh, some, uh, what do you call it, Freemasonry. Possible weird stuff. But, I mean, it's a cool place. And, yeah. And we went one time and, and did video of frogs, like a, like a million frogs, amphibians. Mm-hmm. thought it was great. Yeah. Sucked my little camera down there and. Seen them piggybacking each other, and it was just weird. It was a whole world I'm not part of. Uh, but anyway, uh, I thought that was pretty cool, catching up with old Daniel and seeing what's going on. Uh, yeah. We all need people that are smarter than us to hang around with. I'm not saying that's the case, but <laughs> I'm just saying in general. Yeah. All right, so anyway, uh, we do have a lot of news stuff we'd like to talk about because, it's, you know, just seems like that's the thing. Yeah. And one of the things we should t- actually touch on is uh, one of the biggest events that have happened here in the past two weeks, three weeks or so, is the solar eclipse of 2024. Yeah. And all the gloom and doom that was supposed to occur when the solar came over, uh, when the eclipse came out and did its thing, and it, you know that the path of total destruction happened between this latitude and that line, it's crossed over the same place twice. Okay. And everything is going to go, and all these doomsday maps and all this stuff was happening, right? Yeah. And so far... I would say knock on wood, but who, I don't think that works either. It's like not a whole lot of things have happening. Now there, you know, whenever you have an eclipse, uh, aside from like the Mayans sacrificing a bunch of you know, pe- you know, people for that sort of thing, but uh, not a whole lot seems to happen. Although there has been occasions where earthquakes and things like that have happened. And, and you can easily say that any earthquake that happens after the eclipse was caused by the eclipse. You can say that? Sure. You can also say that any earthquake or event that occurs before the eclipse was caused by the upcoming eclipse. Oh. Okay. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter how you, you, you know, hey, and people are like, what? Because there's really no way to prove that. 
necessarily. Although the eclipse uh, does have some sort of scientific measurable effect on things that occur on Earth. Uh, but we thought we'd like to talk about some of them, right? Yeah. And this is the recent one um, that I actually thought was pretty interesting So because it kind of ties into when we were talking to Daniel yesterday and I mentioned um, some of the things we we're going to talk about in this particular podcast. And he's like, yeah. You remember what it was? The eclipse stuff? No. Of course it was the eclipse stuff. Do you remember specifically? I'll tell you what it is since you obviously you, you don't remember. Okay. Eclipse sickness, solar eclipse sickness. There's people who've been reporting, you know, I, I don't feel good. Mm-hmm. And so the news article uh, that I grabbed, because I seen it, says, can a total solar eclipse make you sick? Yeah. And that's a good question, right? And so experts weigh in on the on the eclipse sickness thing. I have so many tabs open that we're going to talk about in this particular episode. I can't even find one that I already have open. So, All right, so can a total, total solar eclipse make you sick? And experts weigh in on the sickness claims. And it turns out that eye health may or may not be the thing you need to worry about with solar eclipse. Yeah. Now, eye health, you know, you got these people. There were people out there actually just looking straight at it. Even though this is 2024. Yeah. You know, when, when I was going to school... And when I was like in elementary school, they always told us if you ever don't ever look at the sun directly because it'll it'll affect your vision. Yeah. But I, so it, yeah, people like that. You just just look at it, man. Well, there you can take it. And it's like no, you can't. It just burns. You know, you. There are all what these, are you doing? There are all these memes like guys. We talked about this, and it showed the increase in Google searches for why do my eyes hurt? Yeah. After the eclipse, it's like what do you do? And yeah. I was more worried about, okay, so I I picked us up the solar eclipse glasses, mm-hmm. you know, um, did a short on it because they were, some of them were being sold for $1,000, $999. It's like, yeah. all right. It's a, what, what the fear was that I had was that I would buy these glasses and they, and they had the little film and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And all the printed labeling and stuff that said NASA, mm-hmm safe or whatever, like endorsed by NASA as being, you know, cause you, you want it to be like a hundred thousand times darker um, than sunglasses. Yeah. And so there's a number associated. I actually bought filters for cameras and all that your ass, uh, all that jazz. But my fear was like, what if we bought a pair of glasses and put them on there and just stared at it and they were fake yeah, counterfeit glasses and just burned two holes. And I'm thinking I have enough stuff going on. I don't need to add, let's add some weird blindness to it. Yeah. Right. Uh, but so, following the historical event that took place uh, on April 8th, right, and a lot of people started complaining of e- uh, eclipse-induced nausea, yeah, headaches, eye pain. When we talked to Daniel, mm-hmm. he said he felt awful before the eclipse, and then once the eclipse happened, he felt great after that, or felt much, much better. Yeah. So it's like he felt it coming, and then once it happened, he was good. I felt like crap the entire time. So, meanwhile, I mean, thought it was his weather. Me and somebody else, as soon as the totality approached, just felt nothing but like joint pain specifically. Are you talking about Stephanie? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was like, why? And see, and I, I have that pain all the time. So I, I couldn't really tell much difference. It except honestly for, felt um, like, like after you got done with like a, a high elevation hike and you have all that gravity weighing on you, it just, it felt like, pressure on my joints and stuff i will say that um it's funny you bring it up uh day before and the day after my legs were really really heavy yeah which i thought was a little unusual like really heavy so what triggered all this for me was not necessarily what daniel had said but the fact that during it like as soon as that totality hit stephanie uh said I've got a headache, just like out of nowhere. Yeah, well, I had a headache after been, too. And it's like hmm. she had been very outgoing, very funny, cracking jokes. We we're all joking around about the eclipse, and then boom, horrible headache. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> that was the best part of the eclipse. I'm going to use a cuss word, so if you've got kids, you need to put their earmuffs on or yeah. whatever. <laughs> like, we're talking about all the eclipse stuff. and all that. I don't give a shit. <laughs> just like, just, I don't care about it. Like, you're crust. It was funny. So some people were saying, you know, like, you're, I felt very buzzy all over, especially in my head. 
Then I had to have an eye exam. Um, women on social media also mentioned changes in their cycles, their menstrual cycles, which whatever, man, I, I don't know about all that. Um, some people saying they're late. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. And then in, in, in capital letters, who else got their period right after watching the eclipse? <laughs> uh, so that's I mean, crazy. if that's all it takes, yeah. you know, you, I don't, you, you guys can have that sort of thing. I don't want to be a part of that, but, um, but yeah. Then, so there's no physical relationship between the eclipse and a person's health. Yeah. That, that's being basically said, um, by Dr. Nicole Safier. Yeah. Which I'm sure most doctors say that. Basically most doctors basically based say. Based on superstition and folklore. And yeah. Just believe in the And height. they said the same thing about tides, too. Tides and, you know, oh, yeah. my favorite, the full moon. Yeah. Oh, the full moon does. That's not really a thing. And it's like, hold on a second. I've been outside and cruising through places and seen just random weird stuff on a full moon. And not even going into it like, it's a full moon. I'm going to see weird stuff. Just like, what the heck's going on? Yeah. And then there's a lot of EMTs and fire departments and paramedic people and, and, and emergency, emergency response rooms, people that yeah. are like, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a thing. Yeah. So, but the, you know, the official is, there's no correlation. It doesn't really happen. It's like, yeah, all right. Well, you, you got to say that. I mean, can you imagine being a doctor and then saying, yeah, full moon will make you crazy. The eclipse will make you crazy. Yeah. And they're going to go, no. Um, you're, you're not talking the way we want you to, you know, you got to speak to the guidelines. Don't, you don't offer any uh, alternative opinions is you get labeled what they call uh, and doing the air quotes a nut job <laughs> right so yeah it's uh kind of like talking about the full moon stuff um some people have had flicker vertigo which is vertigo caused by flickering bright lights mm-hmm. and they're saying that that may be a reason for the ailments like you're staring at the sun in your little glasses and it's flickering and stuff and it's causing you issues. But it was too slow. Yeah. It's like how, what kind of. Uh, I don't know. know. I, we, I mean, we talk about like refresh, refresh rates in photography where you're looking at like 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second. I didn't see it flickering at all. The only thing it might be a flicker would be the clouds flying by and yeah. they weren't that fast. Oh, I like at work, I've got this one fluorescent bulb that is just flickering now i'm starting to have vertigo from it because it's well, starting to speed that needs up. to be changed because that'll give you a headache yeah and so. usually when it flickers like that the ballast is going bad or the bulb that has a yeah. ballast built into it just needs to be replaced you probably should get switch over to leds anyway but i really did like bad, stumble from actual vertigo it caught me off guard because usually it just like you said gives me a headache yeah and this time i was like oh you know so headaches nausea dizziness dizziness or anxiety lasting less than 24 hours are due to the discombobulation you may feel from sudden light shifts from an eclipse, especially if you're particularly sensitive to them. Yeah. So and it could just be you're staring up the whole time. Um, now, we were going to go on a, a big adventure and go out somewhere and, and, and make a, <laughs> a big thing of it. And then every time we've done that in the past, and this was an argument I had, uh, you know, to stay home, mm-hmm. we, we'd never see it. It wouldn't have the same impact. It's like, man, we could have stayed at home and seen this. And this time we did. Yeah. And we seen it. It was great. Pulled out some lawn chairs. I like, yeah, you shrugged his shoulders. You're like, hmm. Because you I just, still. You just want to fight. No, I still want to go someplace. Okay, well, we can go someplace, but I don't want to make the, let's go someplace and then, like, every time not see it. We did this in 2017, too. We're going to go here. It's going to be great. Didn't see it. Let's go see some balloons launch. Didn't see it. Stars in the sky, all that sort of thing. Let's make an event and go. But this time, I'm glad we actually seen it. Mm-hmm. Well, I might not see another one of these. Mm-hmm. Depending on what happens, if you believe in the solar eclipse junk, m- none of us might see another one. <laughs> you never know, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get a little closer to the mic when you disagree with me. You want, you, <laughs> you want some of this? I'm thinking the solar eclipse is still making people cranky. Yeah. <laughs> Put on your cranky pants and fetch my fighting trousers. <laughs> fetch them yourself. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Pepper. Who <laughs> was ignoring you. She's my sidekick. Fetch my fighting trousers, Pepper. Completely ignoring you. That's right. You got your cranky pants and I got my fighting trousers. <laughs> We're good to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, people having weird feelings and stuff like that. I mean, I can kind of see that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't rule that kind of stuff off because the same, uh, uh, the, the idea by the professionals that say, oh, yeah, barometric pressure and feeling a storm coming off stuff. Yeah, you don't, that's not real. It's like, oh, it most certainly is. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says, so I'll fight them in the front yard, too. 
And it's like, okay, you better bring your fighting trousers. So, all right. So, uh, the bad stuff that everybody was saying was going to happen. And by everybody, I mean the stuff that, you know, people were making videos and little, little TikToks that's in the world. Check the doomsday maps and all this junk. Yeah. Uh, there appears to be a couple things that may have occurred due to the solar eclipse causing issues. And see, I did not get all my research together enough for this part, so we're just going to gloss over a lot of it. Um, right now on TikTok, there are people who are trying to track certain after-eclipse events and yeah. correlate them, kind of like the whole earthquake thing, which that is one of the few ones where I, I believe there's some validity. I think there I do may too, but possibly it's... be some more earthquake activity in the United States due to the eclipse. I don't know yeah. why I think this, but I think it's plausible. But then there's other people are saying stuff like, um, there should be a spike by the end of April in UFO activity. That one I couldn't find. I couldn't pin down something I wanted to put in the podcast. Yeah, I've been trying <laughs> to watch this stuff and doing my searches, and, and yeah. it's like it's too, I can't. But then there's yeah. horrible things that, you know, while not like like huge, like the rapture, are still just awful. Um one of them being uh, this woman who killed her boyfriend and her child after cryptic solar eclipse posts on social media. Now, this woman had been basically posting online that as a astrological influencer, there is spiritual warfare that's tied to Monday's total solar eclipse. Yeah. And I'm like, that's okay. Now, I can't find her particular social media account, but it resulted in her, unfortunately, pushing a nine-year-old girl and infant out of her vehicle. Yeah, see, this is I, yeah. this is why we don't do true murder. And, yeah. and I just don't like... I like the idea of doing a podcast where we've got weird stuff and paranormal stuff. Yeah. You know, and even if you talk about a Sasquatch ripping a hunter apart and stuffing him in a tree, it's detached. It's, it's yeah, it's it's still awful. But yeah. when you have like a real life stories like this, I just don't want to talk about it. And this so this person obviously had some sort of problems. Yeah. Before all this occurred. Yeah. And I'm sure you know if you look throughout history, there's been like the Mayans. I I, I mean I don't know if that's actually true or not. That's something I've always heard that they would do major sacrifices for eclipse and. The eclipses and things like yeah. that. I don't know if that's ever re- truly been proven. So if you know, let me know on YouTube or you can just listen to the podcast because it's hashtag listenable or Facebook or email or use our contact info. Yeah. If you if you're an expert or whatever, or if you've watched more ancient alien stuff than I have, or <laughs> maybe you know. But yes, yeah, so there's obviously a problem and that this lady had is But it makes me wonder because like sometimes you come across you know, you're on TikTok, it's like 1 a.m., or for you, it's 3 or 4 a.m., and you're just... Maybe 5. You're watching certain things, and then it shows you something, and whether it's UFOs or Bigfoot or a nail polish review, it's unhinged, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know? And it makes me want to, like... It's not just a rabbit hole anymore. It, it makes me want to kind of keep track of that person, yeah. but I don't want to get caught following some of these people. You, you know, oh, I don't follow anybody because... <laughs> See, when it comes to that kind of stuff, yeah. because it used to be just like you would just go down this little thread into a rabbit hole, but now that rabbit hole is, is huge. Yeah. It's like Mel's hole. Yeah. It's huge and endless, and you just run through this whole thing where the algorithm, which yeah. we're all calling AI, just yeah. starts giving you this weird stuff. But I will say about this lady, I mean, this being you know with her cryptid stuff uh, about the eclipse and junk like that, yeah. I think that if the animals did more or had more reaction to the solar eclipse, I'd be more inclined to believe that the solar eclipses, you know, had more effect maybe on her and for other individuals too. The only thing that we've seen with animals, um, or that I noticed with animals is we had a couple birds. Yeah. One was a duck. Yeah. And the duck was just rhythmically just chanting something like, go away, go away, go away, go away. Like the whole time. And then as a rooster, yeah. And roosters are kind of uh, dumb. I, I, roosters, but, you know. But other than that, it wasn't like animals doing, like, super weird stuff. 
So it's a like squirrels, like squirreling on. It wasn't like the animals were like it's in like the earthquake. Dogs run away, and animals have way more of a reaction to it. But so it's a goose, and its honk really, honestly, did its honk noise really did sound like "go away, go away," right? Well, this goose is still someplace in our our valley neighborhood area, and it's been continuing going off. Like last time, me and Pepper went outside, but it's. Honk sounds different. Yeah. Well, that's what I was sitting but there. But now like, it's more incessant. It's mm. like nonstop. Maybe he's, <laughs> I'm just maybe like, he's like, let me go now. I did my job. That's what yeah. I said. I was like, what if there's like a secret goose society where the goose are, oh, you know, gosh. and that they know that that's their job. And then if, if they don't chant, go away, the solar eclipse will stay. Yeah. So they know that that's like their, like their task, like the watchers and stuff that watch. You know what I mean? It's like. I mean, we did have like some little like kind of biblical apocalyptic animal stuff with uh toads coming out of the ground yeah so but, we had then again though it's yeah. also that time of year so it's kind of like During i didn't daytime, see though yeah you see them sometimes this is the time where things are like hey okay it's time to make more all right i gotta there and do some stuff that's why we, in our podcast we have included about the sexy zombie cicadas all right which is just kind of gross but so along with unfortunately this this murder that happened um that eventually also included the woman herself i think the article's hard to read because it's like it just has last names and then it's like it seems like the suspect also ended her life but it was a boyfriend a child the boyfriend was found in an apartment that had been like destroyed yeah like the neighbor went in and was like oh my gosh what happened because it was just like a very violent scene and then I was trying to track another one that I couldn't find, and it was something relating to not just the eclipse, but an exorcism that happened recently in the Southwest, and that the possession of a toddler was blamed on the eclipse. Mm. Yeah, that one, I'm still trying to find it. Um, I think the detail, there's some details that may have been retracted, which is why I'm having a harder time finding the article. One not so heavy is the fact that this... um, what was it? Cat was blamed for starting a fire because of the eclipse in Canton, Ohio. But it actually led to uh, investigators finding 36 more cats in the <laughs> home. So kind of good on that cat for like <laughs> blowing the whistle and starting some mayhem during the eclipse so that these 37 cats could get taken care of. Well, I mean, it you sounds know? like this, is a, this was not an MRI, <laughs> a meth-related incident. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Who knows? I think there's a whole yeah. lot more MRIs out there than we know. And I'm not talking about, you know, magnetic resonance imaging, but yeah. meth, I'm going to, I want to term that, you know, meth related incident. I think, I is think, this a meth related? Is this an MRI? I think Elio has already used that term. So, no. <laughs> and then there was a. Elio, you mean Leo's? Oh. Law enforcement officials? Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Hey, I was in the Navy, man. You threw out some acronyms. Yeah. It either makes sense or we'll make stuff up. No. I think a lot of military people do that. We had we had one we called LBE. Mm-hmm. Loud boom effect. Now, also, there was a uh, Georgia woman who blamed not just the solar eclipse, but God for a road, ra- road rage in- incident on I-10 in Florida. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. I'm kind of reading this, and I'm like, I just think you were just... Well, it is Florida. Bad person. I know. That's the other thing. <laughs> it could be uh, MRI adjacent. Yeah. Maybe some slight meth. <laughs> Just a slight meth. I don't know. Probably shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So that's just some of the random stuff. Oh, and then these black quote unquote clouds covered all of Russia during the eclipse. And it wasn't clouds. It's the pollution they're dealing with. The angle at which the the eclipse hit parts of Russia uh, aired all their dirty environmental laundry. Exactly, so, but yeah. they're like mysterious cloud formations have targeted our country. I'm like, y'all, that's smog. Yeah, <laughs> so, gross smog. Yeah, is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is something I thought was kind of cool. Speaking of smog. Uh, Tennessee evidently has introduced a Senate bill, 2691, 2691 for the old Senate bill, Mm -hmm. 
um, that pretty much, and I, we put a link to it. Everything we talk about in the podcast, there's links that take you straight to, you know, and you can kind of check it out at your leisure. You can get a creepgeek, uh, dot com. Creep, you, you can check it out. But we also, anyway, we have links, right? So if you want to see what we're talking about. But yeah, this Senate bill was introduced, and it, it goes through and it talks about, you know, all the stuff that's necessary, like, you know, the voting and all that sort of thing to get in there. But it pretty much says, uh, chemtrails without actually saying chemtrails. Well, they're talking about environmental preservation. Oh. And like air pollution control board. Right? So, yeah, the bill summary <laughs> states, uh, Senate adopted amendment and passed Senate Bill 2691 as amended. Amendment 1 rewrites the bill to prohibit the intentional injection, release, or dispersion by any means of chemicals chemical compounds, substances, or apparatus within the borders of the state into the atmosphere with the express purpose of affecting temperatures, weather, or the intensity of the sunlight. Yeah. Wow. And they say within borders. So they're trying to include airspace as well. Hmm. So uh, first time I've seen it. Yeah. And it's like, wow, that's that's uh, that's something. I mean, maybe it exists. Now, some chemtrails aren't actually chemtrails. Just because you see a, a trail in the air doesn't mean it's a, it's a chemtrail. I mean, yeah. moisture happens if you've ever flown in a jet, right, and sat on the wing and looked out and looked at the engine. You can see, you know, if you're looking, you're like, oh, yeah, behind it, there's a vapor trail. I mean, it is what it is. You fly through clouds. Yeah. That's where rain comes from, and you disturb it as you go whizzing through it at 400 miles an hour. It's going to do some stuff, especially when you get sucked into the turbines. But some stuff seems to be um, lasting a lot longer in the air. And a lot of people say they're chemtrails. And they may be because there has there's weather modification that does happen. Mm-hmm. And there's ways to modify weather. Um, I like to think that the chemtrails are put in there um, that occur just to make us less tasty to aliens. Hmm. Look, let's go ahead and we're going to season us so that we are unpalatable to the aliens because I think, I think we get you know get eaten by you know i think we're doing a good job of that ourselves with all the microplastics we're eating maybe the microplastics are what's making us less palatable to being eaten by an alien Gosh. thing you know what i mean so we don't need so we're now we're no longer organic okay right mm-hmm. so maybe we're now sort of genetically modified through chemtrails and microplastics to make us taste like shit. Microplastics would be the artificial flavoring and the chemtrails would be the artificial preservatives. Sort of. It's more like you can, like with some products that the, you're allowed a certain percentage of wood pulp. Mm -hmm. It's like that. Okay. So they're allowing a certain percentage of microplastic and chemicals to make us taste uh, like fecal poop. I think this is interesting, but not, in a paranormal sense. No, it's, well, um, yeah, it'd be more of a or gov- conspiratorial you know, Conspiratorial, sense. because, okay, um, I am doing a lot of work in tourism. We work with photographers all the time, relatively around the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Pisgah National Forest, and some of our best photography has quote-unquote chemtrails in them. And we get people complaining about that. Yeah. They're like, I don't want to see the gorge with those awful chemtrails. It's and like, what do you got against clouds, man? Yeah, pretty much. That's what a chemtrail turns into. You know? Whether it's chemical based or natural. Now, whether it, yeah, like you said, whether it's chemical based or natural, it happens. So it's something that is commonplace for somebody like me who kind of grew up near Air Force bases, like, you know, Oceana. And then when I lived out in Albuquerque, we'd see them all the time. It's not anything that detracts from the beauty of the areas that I have lived in. Yeah. But people get passionate and upset. Like, to the point of, like, having to moderate people on social media because of it. Well. And I'm yeah. I'm not the only person that has noticed this in in the marketing work that I do. So it makes me wonder if North Carolina might copy this because North Carolina is known for these. I mean, maybe, but at the same time, though, uh, yeah. if you look at a jet flying through the air, passenger plane, jet, whatever, yeah, those things have exhaust. Yeah. And that exhaust is going to go and mix with the vapor, and it's going to cause something, you yeah. know. I think they need to be specific, and there's a lot of people out there that they get worked up over issues because that's an easy issue to be for. 
I am against chemtrails. I am 100% chemtrail free. And I want to stay that way. It's real easy, right? You can virtual signal that all day long. People are going to be like, yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm cool. But it's mostly the older population. Well, I mean, everybody becomes the older population after For a while. Me, like, I'm just like, really? That's that's what you're going to get upset about? Yeah. Meanwhile, Angel Orange and chemical exposure and everything else that's actually happened. You know, it's yeah. taken so long to have anything done with that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of like, oh, that's cool. They're going to ban. That. But here's the thing. How, how are you going to enforce it, Tennessee? If, if it really is a chemtrail, let's just say. You know, our it, buddy Dirk could probably tell us how they try to enforce it. Well, okay, so it would be real easy to turn off the thing that, basically identifies your plane as a plane. Hmm. They have to transpond. They have to send the signal. The same thing they're trying to do with drones, like little pocket drones and stuff and little, little uh, commercial or itty bitty drones is that they have to transpond and send their ID, Mm -hmm. turn it off. It's like, if you, you know, if you don't want to see lights on planes in the sky and you're trying to be a bad guy, just turn your lights off, which lights on UFOs. There's still a thing that I wonder about. Why do you need lights? I don't get it, you know. And yeah. the argument would be, well, the UFOs want people to think that they're actually planes. That's or dumb. they don't want other planes to run into them. But I'm thinking <sighs> if you were a UFO traditionally and can fly across the galaxy or whatever, I'm pretty sure you can get out of the way of a plane. And you're going to know it's coming, right? I think with all that technology, blending in is the most primitive of all the solutions yeah you know so but i also had a, a sort of a, a counter thought to my thought what what if <laughs> it's ufo tourism mm-hmm. right so it'd be like you getting in your van and driving somewhere and then getting into a little little trouble like oh you're a van right you're, you're not armored mm-hmm. you don't have weapons on it you know so you're not like you're just a car flying around in the sky. And so maybe you would get hit by a plane. You know, maybe you do need to blend in because maybe your, your uh, means of transportation is not like meant for stealth. Maybe it's not meant for any of that stuff. You uh-huh. know, like we have tanks. Yeah. Your van is definitely not a tank. So if somebody lobs a rocket at it or shoots at it, it's going to cause damage. See, I, my brain went a different direction when you said tourism. I was thinking like, you know, how when you go to New Orleans or parts of California or even New York City and there's like the tour bus and it's oh, yeah. brightly lit so that you recognize it as the tour bus. That's what I was thinking. So, well, maybe they're just like, Hey, let's just go, let's go check this out. Let's go, let's see what's going on. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh my gosh, what's going on? It would be like the idea that octopuses come from space, right? That Octopi. they're alien. All right. Well, whatever, man. And so think about this. If you were sending a biological probe, Mm-hmm to a planet and you knew that that planet was like 80% water, are you going to send, what are you going to send? What would you send first? Would you send an organism that's just straight up land-based? If 80% of where you're going is wet, you're going to send something that can thrive in that wet environment, right? Yeah. Doesn't that make sense? If you're like a couple hundred billion miles away and you're like, all right, we're going to send something here. Wouldn't you send something that just the odds, like we wouldn't send a Rover to the moon swims because mm-hmm. it's all dirt yeah i know there's frozen ice and all that stuff and there's enough atmosphere for a helicopter to fly around or a little drone copter but so i don't know anyway moving back into the podcast so tennessee's going to ban chemtrails how are they going to enforce it you get a plane flying over at 400 miles if they turn off the transponder you, you won't even know it's there maybe you can see it on radar but it won't be identified you know and, and i wouldn't say that our government is is beyond keeping all the lights on and the transponders on like, Oh, we're going to conduct this covert operation. Let's just ride around with our radio real loud. So everybody can hear it and see us. Right. I'm not going to do that. So zombie sex cicadas. Okay. is something that uh, I didn't think we had to be aware of. Oh, and there was an article saying that cicadas are going to be crazy now because the eclipse made it even worse. Not the fact that they're supposed to come popping out anyway, but yeah. they're going to be terrible. So these hypersexualized zombie cicadas may spread STDs, and here's what you should know. The fungus Massifor cicadina, I'm not a good science pronunciation guy, laced with the same chemical found in psychedelic mushroom uh, causes bizarre behavior. Mm. 
So across America, trillions of periodical cicadas emerging later this spring in 16 states could include some sort of what experts are calling as zombie cicadas, right? Mm -hmm. These will be the ones that are infected with the fungus that causes them to frantically mate even after their genitals fall off. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I'm Um, thinking what's different. (laughs) (laughs) So so periodical cicadas live most of their lives underground, we know that, before a synchronized emergence every 13 or 17 years ago. And now Brood 13, known as the Northern Illinois Brood, has a 17-year life cycle. But Brood, oh, wow, I don't even know this. X-I-X, what is that? 11 21 (laughs) I don't know what that is, right? <laughs> the great southern brood of the 13 years cicada is going to happen. So this year's crop of these cicadas is expected to be larger and noisier than usual with the dual emergence. And the last time this occurred was in 1803. Mm-hmm. So they're expected to start coming out around mid-May. These little crusty bugs, right? Oh, gosh. Yeah. So you know, these bugs have enough to worry about because they don't have mouths. When they come out, they don't eat. Their job is to... Basically sleep and then get up, mm-hmm. do their job, and then die. Mm-hmm. So they got to watch out for things like copperheads and other bugs and predators that can eat them. And that's without the risk of having to worry about this fungus, yeah. you know, psychedelic mushroom fungus, which you've been steadily drying on your air dryer thing. It's kind of freaks me out making these dried mushrooms, right? But they're not psychedelical. Um, so, you know, the, these, the psychoactive compound in psychedelic mushrooms, you know, it does the same. It does, it affects humans. It's definitely going to affect these bugs is what they're trying to say. It lies dormant in the soil. And then when the cicadas go pushing through yeah. into their emergence, uh, it causes some bizarre cicada behavior. And both the broods, both broods, the ones in Illinois and the ones going to pop up in the south with a 17-year and a 13-year deal, are susceptible to the infection. Yeah. And it's going to be detected or it can be detected within a week to 10 days of the emergence. And that comes from uh, Matthew Casson, who's an associate professor of mycology and forest pathology at West Virginia U- University. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so infected cicadas mm-hmm. have to go through a lot before their genitals fall off. So now the rest of the article is yours to talk about. I was just like, uh, basically, some of the bizarre, quote-unquote bizarre behavior um, – no, no, you, you got to talk about what happens to them. Before. Yeah, so what happens is the cicada continues to participate in normal activities as if it were healthy, like it tries to mate, tries to fly around, tries to walk on plants, yet a third of its body has been replaced by the fungus. Yeah, the fungus overtakes their little bodies, eats through their limbs, yeah. and their abdomens fall off. Yeah. As this so grows as a sponge inside them. Yes. Oh, gosh. This, um, is, this is why I'm afraid the to The fungus eat. recognizes a hormonal signal signal from the cicadas, and it kind of triggers a hypersexualized behavior, which is scientifically interesting to Kassan. So males, for example, they'll continue to try and mate with females unsuccessfully because, again, their back end is a fungus. That's so gross. But they'll also pretend to be females to get males to come near them, and that doubles the contact of cicadas that are infected and the infected individual that comes in contact with them. Yeah, blah. yeah, so. They come out of the ground at full voice, vibrating their timbles. They drum like membranes in their head, and then it goes, makes that noise, right? But here's the most pending question that uh, Kassan's received, or most urgent. Can a person get high by eating a cicada infected with the fungus? I'll give you $5 to find out. Not you, Omi. I don't because if you turn into a zombie or something, that might Kassan be. Kassan says maybe if you're motivated enough. You know what that is? That's the uh, f around and find out. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing: the psychoactive compounds were just two of less than one thousand compounds found in these cicadas. Yes, they are notable, but not. But other compounds might be harmful to humans. I wouldn't take the risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. And is it cicada or cicada? I've always pronounced it cicada. See, I like, did too yeah, until somebody C-I. got super eh, and corrected me. Well, who is that person? Are they an expert? No. Wasn't me. Don't look at me. I always said cicada. Mm. So Probably somebody you know. It's, may or may not be. It may be the only thing they're smart in. <laughs> is, that, you know. is correcting me? Yeah, is there one thing? No, correcting, <laughs> correcting pronunciation. They probably hate our podcast. Yeah. These fools. Yeah. 
So uh, there is a link in this article if you want to check it out. It says uh, cacadas are edible. No. I mean, everything is edible if you're motivated enough, according to that dude. Like, I, I'm not going to eat one. It's not the end of the world. We've been watching Fallout and seeing the big giant bugs and stuff, the radiated you know, critters, like the, what do you call them, rad roaches? No. Uh. So the states that are going to see these periodical cicadas this year are Alabama, Arkansas, uh, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Tennessee, Wisconsin, and Virginia. Mm. And it kind of annoys me that they didn't put the list of states and how they fall on the map. I think it just said alphabetical. Yeah. Like, mm, all right. My thing was, uh, like, I've read a different article about the cicadas because I'm really... Okay, y'all, I do not like them. I, they bug me. I get unhinged. I am just not comfortable with, with these bugs. They're just very uncomfortable. <laughs> Especially when so, they fly around trying to attack you. Or get in my hair or drop into yeah. my nice cold drink or try to get in my ear. Just I don't like these this particular bug at all. And um I've had one trapped I had more than one trapped in my hair. That wasn't cool either. So I've been trying to read as many of these articles as I can to figure out just how impacted North Carolina will be. And I can't seem to get an answer as far as the dual, you know, uh, emergence, I found one article. Actually, I found a couple articles saying North Carolina was only going to get brewed eighteen or, or nineteen or seventeen or whatever, and then I found one saying that North Carolina would get part of brood thirteen, but all of brood seventeen. And then I'm finding articles that says North Carolina is getting everything, and I'm I just want to know just how. How, how stricken I will be this May. Well, you know, just wear a helmet or a hat. I bought a bunch of bucket hats. Just wear a bucket hat and be safe. I just cut my hair short so it's hard to put it in a ponytail. Cause That's why you got to wear that bucket hat. It'll protect you. But they can still get into the strands below the, the hat. Look, I'm trying to help. You, know, you, have to, you have to fend for yourself with some of this, I guess. So... <laughs> You just cruise around with a little racquetball racket or a pickleball racket and just whack them when they show up. You know, just keep in mind, they have no mouths. Their entire job is to sleep in the ground and then I have a horrible species. fungus. So, yeah, I got a, I got a fungus STD. <laughs> terrible. It's, yeah. So speaking of terrible, um, this is kind of funny. So Grim Reaper attends funeral, mm-hmm. which is kind of a funny thing, right? But if I was going to have the Grim Reaper show up, because as we talk about the article, basically this, this lady who passed away hired one of her friends to show up dressed as the Grim Reaper because she thought it'd be funny. I'd have like Ed McMahon or somebody running up with a big giant check at my funeral. Like somebody there yeah. is going to get a big, big giant check. Hmm. That used to be a thing. You used to see the publisher clearing house TV commercials, right, where they just go, they all jump out of the vehicle and they go sprinting up to the door with this big giant check. And they're like, you've won whatever. I want that to happen. Mm. It, it it won't be yeah. any real money. Yeah. It'd be like, that'd be about the end. I wouldn't know how it would turn out. So I'd probably, you know, it'd be like, was that joke any good? Nah, I have to haunt people, try to find out. Was it good? I've seen other people with like death ideas, like what to happen at their funeral. And they've planned it out. Like one, I've, there's a popular meme where they have somebody hired, uh, to sit at the very back or the side of the funeral and pretend to be like a CIA agent yeah. and just be like, is he gone? <laughs> is he really gone? You Talking know? to the wrist the whole time. Yeah. Um, or people paying for like, you know, like some like family guy stuff, like some dude to walk around the whole funeral with a tuba playing something, yeah. you know? Well, I like uh, old school where you had uh, Will Ferrell singing Dust in the Wind. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty funny, so. But yeah, um, so evidently, <clears throat> this woman's dying wish was to have the Grim Reaper show up at her funeral. Yeah. And so it made it on Twitter, otherwise known as X. And uh, it was like 112,000 views and stuff. It's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that would be sort of, because uh, then you just show up and say, am I late? But the Grim Reaper's kind of weird looking. It doesn't look like your traditional Grim Reaper. All no. the, they're all wearing like the hood and the stuff, but they have a skull face and the top of their head looks like brains. It's like, wow, that's pretty, pretty scary. So, you know, if you're a small children, 
attending at a funeral. I mean, come on. Mm. But yeah, I think it's probably funnier to have Ed McMahon or somebody like that. Whoever's doing the publisher clearinghouse thing, if they even still do it, running up all crazy. A big giant check. Mm. So that's kind of funny, right? Yeah. So anyway, zombie cicadas can kill you. Grim Reaper's going to show up at your funeral. Let's talk about the Tardy Grade Anti-Aging Elixir. Do you remember Tardy Grade? Those little cow-looking things that are like micro They could survive probably on the moon and all that stuff, and they're yeah. like almost indestructible. Yeah. Well, evidently they're saying that since the Tardy Grade can enter a form of hibernation called biostasis when they get stressed out, mm-hmm. the proteins that make the biostasis possible has been showed to slow human cells way down. Hmm. And so they're saying that, you know, the scientists suspect that they could use tardigrade proteins to slow human cell death. Huh. But our cell composition is a little different than It's theirs. a protein. Proteins are, don't care. I, I know. If you're, but... if you're taking all the stuff that's not compatible and leaving the stuff that is compatible, breaking it down to basic elements, it makes sense. They're not, they're, they're not cows. They're water bears. Water bears. Yes. Well, I couldn't remember what they were. I mean, we, we know what they look like. They look weird. Yeah. And it's just kind of weird to see what looks like a like a real animal, like in, you know, like six legs and stuff. Yeah. A little mole-looking face. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're pretty hardy, man. They've been frozen and you see them in places where, you know, a lot of things just cannot survive and these things are fine and they put some on the moon and it's possible that they're still living up there. Mm. Uh, but yeah, when they get stressed out and they hit that home, uh, biostasis and they can just basically hibernate or almost put themselves in like suspended animation. If they could take that protein and put it in humans, that's the new anti-aging elixir. Mm. So you have to go to Europe. To get that, because, you know, here, unless we can make a ton of money off of it, big farmer or whatever, you won't be able to get the the new tardigrade anti-aging serum. Yeah. You just get a couple shots and your cells slow way down. That so is... I want to know if your cells slow way down, do you slow way down? Oh, gosh. That would be an unfortunate side effect. Like, can you see all the pharmaceutical ads on TV? May cause explosive diarrhea. So it May cause slowness. There are long, um, long-living animals that... um. Eight-legged animals, I'm sorry, I said six. Yeah, that uh, move slower, but they have a long life expectancy, like you tortoises. Mean, like tort eye. Yeah, and <laughs> um, parrots have a fairly long lifespan compared to all other birds. Uh, yeah, they can live like 100 years, some of these things. There used to be a s- species of um, like prehistoric sloth that lived a long time. You know what else can live a long time? What? Hermit crab. Those things can live like 14 years. So when you go buy one for like $4 from some beachside town, you, yeah. you might be committed. <laughs> I did that one time. Bought a bunch of these. Those stupid things, man, they fight at night. Yeah. They're loud. They scuffle over shells. They scream at each other. It's like, what the? I don't even know what happened. I don't even know what happened to those. Remember? I think I sent them home with the kids. Yeah. yeah. Man, I don't know what happened. Birds. <laughs> um, it's a little Luti- Lutino... It's a cockatiel, right? It's the one that's like pale yellow and has the rosy yeah. red cheeks thing. I think I got one of those um, when my youngest was eight or nine at the time, maybe 10. That thing is still kicking. It's like 20 years old, this bird. Yeah. Sunny. And uh, she wanted it, and then she was kind of scared of it. And I, I had to bottle, not bottle feed, syringe feed this thing. Yeah. And yeah, it was it was a process. And then sometimes I you know, traveled for work, and I'd have to take that stupid bird mm-hmm. on this road trip because I couldn't leave it at home. It was a, it was a, it was a trying time. And one time we had a sick cat, two sick kids, and a bird in a cage in a Hyundai in a Hyundai Accent hatchback. Uh, it was the longest freaking eight hours. Right, uh-huh. everybody was sick and awful. The cat was sick. Everybody was just sick. Mm-hmm. It sucked ass. And then I drove, and it took almost like a 12-hour trip because of weather. And then I had to go to work the next day. It was awful, man. Yeah. Everybody was like, nah. it was a terrible, terrible trip. Uh, but speaking of Japanese, people will be named Sato in 500 years. Really? Yeah, this I thought was pretty interesting because basically, and this will be of their own doing if this occurs, Everyone in Japan will be called Sato 
by 2531 unless a marriage law is changed. Okay. Because the idea is they want to they want to input surnames. They want to change the way people are names. Yeah. Named in Japan, right? And so the way this works is um it's hard to describe. Japanese citizens will all have the same family name in 500 years time unless married couples are permitted to use separate surnames. Right. A new study has suggested as part of a campaign to update a civil code dating back to the late 1800s. So the study led by Hiroshi Yoshida, a professor at uh, Tohoku University, projected that if Japan continues to insist that couples select a single surname, every single Japanese person will be known as Sato-san by 2531. Yeah. Um, now, Yoshida conceded that his projections were based on several assumptions, but said the idea was to use numbers to explain the present system's potential effects on Japanese society to draw attention to the issue. If everyone becomes Sato, we may have to be addressed by our first names or by numbers. And I don't think that would be a good world to live in. Sato already tops the list of Japanese surnames, accounting for 1.5% of the total population, according to a March 2023 survey, with Suzuki a close second. Um, Some social media users wrongly assume the study first reported on Monday, but published in March, was an April Fool's Day prank, but Yoshida said he wanted to give people pause for thought. A nation of Satos would not only be inconvenient, but also undermine individual dignity. Um, he said, according to the Asha Simboom, adding that the trend would also lead to the loss of family and regional heritage. Wow. You know, so, Japan's smaller, but I see this here in America. We have like whole areas or regions where there is a very dominant surname. And yeah, but see, the thing is that you don't pick it. It's yeah. you're born into it. That's how we do it here. Yeah. You know, like your last name is your last name based off your family. Evidently, you can pick your own surname. So how we do it here in the U.S. is, is weird compared to like other places. When you look at like how names and naming structure breaks down, you know, it'd be like. You know, your name is like where you are in relation to your family, like son of so and so from this town. Whereas we have just a first name, you know, and kind of a last name, and it doesn't necessarily signify where you're from. It's just how you're called. Hmm. You know, because like you'll see it where over there, it's just like you know, Omi from Okinawa. So if you translate that into English and, and bring it to the U.S., you'd be Omi Okinawa. Even though you're not from Okinawa. I was just but trying to use that as an example. But kind of translates to village of or people of. Sure. So, I mean, I think we may not fully understand the grasp of how they do it. It's not necessarily yeah, I don't that understand they how choose they... it. It's more like, okay, so... And couples in Japan have to choose which surname to share when they marry. Yeah. But in 95% of the cases, it's the woman who changes their name. Yeah. So they they just have to pick. So I don't think it's necessarily set in stone what your surname is going to be. It looks like you can pick. So I don't I don't know. But it's just what they're saying is over time if enough people pick that surname and it sticks, then everybody's going to be called that surname hmm. in a couple of hundred years' time. I think it's just sort of optimistic that, you know, they think by 2531, you know, everybody's going to be called Sato. <laughs> but I think it's optimistic to think that. We might not even be here in 2531. Oh, so, if you, I mean, if you, it depends. If you watch enough news, it won't really matter. But that would make it even easier. Let's just say you're only left with 10% of the population because of whatever. And yeah. you might have an entire country or what's less of it, like Japan, where everybody just got enough Sados left there. It's like, we're all Sado. Because then would it still stay Japan or would it just become Sado? Mm. So I just thought that was kind of crazy. I'm like, what? 
But, you know, if you're a Japanese expert or whatever, like PewDiePie, who moved over to Japan and is embracing all the culture and stuff, you know, let us know, man. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of weird. So. Huh. What do you think about that? There's huh. other articles we could have talked about, but they, some of them were inappropriate. <laughs> so, well, there's like U.S. Olympians that are slamming Nike for their women's track kit, which is what they wear, like their okay. uniforms or whatever, when they run track and it's like it's you know inappropriate because once you start running things come out yeah and so for some reason they track has turned into everything super skimpy you know yeah so uh probably more interesting than that. everybody's become sato but speaking of desert island rescue and this is where we're going to start to go ahead and wrap up the podcast so when i was a little kid there was a couple things that could kill you mm-hmm Quicksand being one of them. At any particular point, if you're in an unfamiliar environment, you will fall in the quicksand. And if there's not like a branch to grab onto or a horse with the with the reins that you can grab and it can back you out, you're going to die in quicksand. You're going to struggle and you're going to sink. If you don't have somebody to reach in there and grab you and pull you out, quicksand's going to take you. Right? So these were fears that I had growing up. So I got to make sure don't ever fall in quicksand because you've seen it in movies all the time. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I used to see a lot in shows, and this is probably mainly sort of comes to mind because of Gilligan's Island. They were trapped on a deserted island, right? Yeah. Um, is spelling out the word like help with coconuts or palm fronds, you know, like palm yeah. tree branches and stuff to, to get yourself rescued. Because a plane flying by, pilot minding his own best wheel, hey, it says help. And we've seen it in tons of movies. Yeah. Lighting a bonfire that says help or just a bonfire, some smoke. So you could be seen by passing ships and planes and stuff like that. Well, this really happened. Yeah. So you got some dudes that were actually stuck on an island, and so they made a, a sign that said help. Okay. And so they made the sign that says help, and these three men that were stranded on an uninhabited Pacific atoll survived over a week before being rescued by the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard. And you're talking about aviators and sailors a lot, right? Yeah. Um, the fishermen spelled out help with palm fronds on a beach, enabling the Navy and Coast Guard aviators to pinpoint them on a remote island. Oh. And there's a, like thousands of these little islands, you know, because there's a high likelihood you'd never be found. And recently, what, four podcast episodes, we talked about Amelia Earhart and, you know, all that sort of thing. She was, uh, could have been stuck on a desert island. Don't really know exactly what happened to her, right? Yeah. So a Coast Guard ship, the Oliver Henry, picked the guys up. Um, and took them back to the atoll where they had set out like nine days earlier and 100 miles away. So they went fishing things. They ran aground or hit a reef or something like that. Yeah. And they had to go to this little island so they could kind of survive. And they spelled out help. And they were obviously very excited to be reunited with their families, of course. But um, they had left on like March 31st wow. from the uh, Pulawat Atoll in a 20-foot boat with an outboard motor. And that uh, Pulawat Atoll is a small island, has about a thousand inhabitants, and it's part of the United, or I'm sorry, Federal States of Micronesia, mm-hmm. about 1,800 miles away from the Philippines. And they were fishing, they had a coral reef, uh, put a hole in the boat, which was causing it to take on water. So they went, they, they basically went to a place, a little island, so they could try to save themselves, right? So they kind of grounded their vessel, in this big hole in it. And then they basically went ahead and made the help sign. But on April 6th, so this is a while ago, uh, a relative reported them missing. Yeah. Said, okay, these guys have been gone. You know, uh, they called the Coast Guard in Guam and said they hadn't returned um, from the Ecolot Atoll, which is another little island they went fishing off of. And that search that they did was like 78,000 square miles. That's big. Yeah. Uh, so the U.S. Navy sent up a P 8 Poseidon plane from Japan, the Kadena Air Force Base. Or, um, and they went around looking for them, and they spotted the three on the uh, on the uh, island, and they dropped them survival packages. And then the next day, a Coast Guard uh, Hercules plane from the Naval Air Station, which is kind of like a uh, Poseidon, dropped a radio to them because mm-hmm. they came out of Hawaii, and they flew out there, and they dropped a radio to them. And they mm-hmm. said, that, hey, we're thirsty, but we're all good. And the help sign was pretty visible. We could see it from a couple thousand feet in the air. So that's a pretty big help sign. Yeah. Um, and it's similar to a rescue that happened before in 2020 where they spelled out SOS on the beach. So I guess depending on how many palm friends you have, you know, it depends on you put help or SOS. I don't know. Uh, an Australian military helicopter crew uh, gave those guys that were lost 
um, food and water as well. But when I was a kid, man, if yeah. you're ever trapped on a desert island, that's what you did. If you spelled out help or SOS or whatever on the beach, you would be rescued. See, I was thought it was like rocks or... Uh, Whatever's big enough to be seen from a distance, right? Yeah. So a palm frond is a lot bigger than a coconut. Because you imagine, you'd have to have a lot of coconuts. Because you know? then you have to look at the font. Do like you use comic sands? Like, <laughs> like palm tree uh, trunks? I mean, well, probably easier to... Like, if you take the whole trunk and you spell out help with multiple palm trees, because you want to stay before you, you try to come up with any other rescue options, that help, all those days it sits out there, at least allow the, allows those tree trunks to dry out in case you're like, well, nobody's going to rescue me. I need to build a boat. Well, I would hope you have an axe or something. You ever try to cut down a palm tree or any tree? It's a lot of work. Yeah. I'd really just grab the leaves, the big branches. Yeah. They fall out all over the place. Because you probably just walk around and pick them up. Yeah. And hopefully the palm fronds would be dead. Because if they're dead, they're going to turn dark, like yeah. brown or whatever. And then uh, on white sand, they would probably show up a lot more in contrast. You know, um, If you ever have to. So there you go. Uh, survival information from Creep Geeks podcast. Chop down some stuff, spell the words, and hope for the best. Mm-hmm. But the fire idea works good for ships because they can see it and whatever. You want to create something a visual sort of thing can go for miles but i just thought that was funny so i don't have to worry about quicksand oh, if you ever trap so it works <laughs> evidently it works right it's so like in every movie i've ever seen where they have some sort of like war movies and stuff like that you're trapped on a desert island and they spell help and they eventually get rescued except for robinson crusoe i think he was taken by pirates mm. bad people so yeah that's all i gotta say about that okay so Anyway, there you go. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If you want to reach out to us, uh, you can call the phone number we mentioned earlier in the show. Um, Also, uh, contact at creekgeeks.com or reach out to us on social media. We are available on all major social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, even YouTube. Just shoot us a message there. And uh, we are trying to make our Facebook group grow. So check us out. Show notes. There's links. And join us on Facebook. Did you say I could follow us on TikTok? Yep. Did you say I could use a Google Voice and send us a message? That's our number. Oh, okay. It's a 1-800 number. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Emails and stuff like that. So, uh, Oh, and if you reached out to us wanting to put our uh, our podcast on your upcoming internet radio channel, I need more details, man. You can't just say I'm, I'm creating an internet channel and I want to put your show on there. Yeah. I don't know who you are, what you're all about. Details work, brother. So, okay. if you're listening, do appreciate it. But uh, Anyway... Thank you very much to the patrons, and see you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye.